Are you curious about the future? Have you ever wondered what the Bible has to say about our current culture? In this powerful sermon, we will delve into the pages of scripture and uncover the prophetic insights that give us a glimpse into the future. So, join us, as we embark on a journey to understand what the Bible predicts about our world, and the impact it will have on our lives. Moses stood against the gods of Egypt, Elijah stood against Baal, the Maccabees stood against the gods of the Greeks, the first Christians stood against the gods of Rome, they didn't stop gospel from spreading and that's what the enemy wants. We have seen signs in the heavens we have seen wars and rumors of wars. The Bible says that when you see certain signs, it means that redemption is near. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn new book, The Return of the Gods. If the gods have indeed returned, as Jonathan lays out in detail in the book, how would they return in the modern era? We're not seeing people worshipping golden calves or idols made of wood anymore, so how would they return? It seems much more subversive today. They're returning to a civilization that has known God, so it's a whole different thing. First of all, they can't come back all at once. They can't come back saying hey we're going to mess you up. It's going to come back step by step. First by a little thing. There are three primary gods among others that are mentioned in the book. These are the Possessor, the Enchantress, and the Destroyer. These gods represent everything that is dark and evil. They began to return in the 1960s when people started to turn away from God. This trend continued as prayer was removed from schools and the so-called sexual revolution began. The first thing you need to understand is that when you open the door, you're inviting God into your home. But if you keep the door open, it's like saying that you're welcoming other things into your life as well. That's what the Bible is saying. There's a principle in Hebrew called Baal, which means possessor or Lord. This is the principle of an alternate God, one who takes the place of God in our lives. This is the God of prosperity and success, and he's the one who drives God out of our lives. Do you see what's happening in America? A spirit is driving God out, step by step. It started small, with people taking prayer out of school. Look where it has come since then. When you empty the house of God, something else is going to come in. That something is the spirit of Baal. He was the most prevalent spirit in ancient times and he's associated with Zeus. He's like the king of the spirits and he brings his friends with him. The Bible says that he caused Israel to forget God. There's a spirit in America that has caused us to forget God. This spirit is called a pagan god, and its mission is to turn Christian nations into pagan nations. We've been watching this happen for the last 50 years, and it's why we've seen things like the Ten Commandments being banned in America. We are watching our nation and civilization become pagan. This is when people worship many gods instead of one god. We have written about how America is following the same path as ancient Israel. This means that some of the same problems that caused Israel to fail will now cause America to fail. The Isaiah 9 verse 10 judgment talks about the evil spirits that are taking over America. Paganism is the belief in multiple gods. This means that there is not one truth, but many truths. People can create their own reality. This is what we are seeing when people say your truth or my truth. If you say I am a tree, we have to accept it because there is no absolute truth in paganism. Sex, nature, and ideology can all be considered gods in paganism. This is behind the idea of wokeism, which is an ancient mystery linked to our addiction to computers. Computers are linked to virtual reality. This is linked to Baal, who is a pagan god. In the 1960s, America started becoming more pagan. One of the signs of Baal was a bronze bull. People worshipped Baal because they thought he would make them prosperous. In the 1980s, a sign appeared near Wall Street. It was a massive bronze bull, and it was the sign of Baal from the Bible. That means that the nation had once known God, but now it was turned away from God and subject to Baal. In the Dark Trinity the first member is the Possessor Baal. The second member is the Enchantress. She is known as the wife or lover of Baal. She appears in the Bible as a star or Ashtora. Next comes Ashtura, who is also known as Ishtar and Aphrodite. She was known as a dark goddess, associated with things like sexuality and divorce. 
When she came into a culture, we would expect that people would start to turn away from God and there would be a revolution in sexual values. That's exactly what happened in the 1960s when the sexual revolution started. This is the power that will seek to possess a nation by turning Christian values of marriage into pagan values. We have been witnessing the sexualization of America and the West. This means that there is a goddess of prostitution who is taking sex out of marriage and putting it into the culture. This is causing problems with marriage and family. We are seeing marriages become weaker and more easily broken. This goddess was responsible for creating the first pornographic images and literature. The word erotic, which describes something sexually exciting, comes from the Greek word eros. The last member of the dark trinity is the destroyer. The destroyer always comes in progression, first, they turn from God. Then they engage in sexual immorality. After that, they start sacrificing their children to pagan gods. This was common in the pagan world, but it also happens when people are being paganized, when they start following pagan gods instead of God. If we're being paganized, we'll end up sacrificing our own children. If we legalize abortion, we will have killed 60 million children. We don't have time to go into the mystery, but if we look at the book, we will see that ancient ways of sacrificing children to Malak are happening right now without people even realizing it. It's unbelievable that people should know what happened in ancient times and during Bible times. Malak was an idol that people would literally sacrifice their children to. The Bible called it passing through the fire. The people who are coming back have a vendetta against Christians and conservatives. They're trying to stop us from doing what we believe in, and they're especially targeting Christians. They're trying to push us out of society, just like the gospel pushed them out. They're trying to nullify the word of God and make it disappear from culture. That's why religious freedom is being threatened. The second part is saying that God and the gospel are evil. This is where it happened with every God. What happened when Baal took power? He started hunting down the prophets. That's when Elijah came. God raised up Elijah. And so, this same thing happened with Israel. What happens is they want everyone to join them and that's what believers have to not do because when the believers were being persecuted under Rome, all they had to do was offer up some incense to the emperor and just worship God, but they said no, we're going to stand for God no matter what we have to be. Some people think that America is a target for evil forces. They believe that these demonic spirits are trying to take over the world. They say that we are seeing more and more people who hate good and persecute Christians. This is setting the stage for a generation of people who will be enemies of God. The only hope America has is if there is a revival and believers stand for the gospel and spread the gospel. If everybody is intimidated and they don't open their mouth and they don't share God, then the darkness wins. When the light goes out, the darkness comes in. That leads to persecution, but there is still hope. People who believe in God are praying for something like this. Actually, these are biblical times. You might not realize it, but we're living in the same kind of time as when Moses stood up to the Egyptian gods, or when Elijah stood up to Baal, or when the Maccabees fought against the Greek gods. The first Christians also fought against the Roman gods. But those people in biblical times didn't give up and neither should we. We have what they had, light, truth, and power through Messiah, Jesus. So, don't let anyone stop you from sharing the gospel. The Bible says that God is the most powerful being and that Jesus is like him. There's nobody like God or Jesus. They have the power to cast out darkness and light. But we have to rise up, stand up, and spread the gospel. We have to live by the Spirit of God and follow his word. This is an exciting time that we are living in and we should be thankful for it. Whether you are involved in pornography, lust, or abortion, you have to get rid of these things from your life. The first step is repenting. There can be no revival without repentance. Then ask God for cleansing and his power and live your life all out for God. This could be the most exciting time but we need to rise to it so even if there's darkness, we need to light up the world. According to Ezekiel 38, when the invasion known as the Gog Magog War occurs, the first thing that will happen is that God will open up the ground and swallow a significant part of the army. 
This is similar to what happened in the past when Moses was having leadership problems with his people. God said to put all of those who were opposed to Moses in front of the tent of meeting. Those who were opposed to God's leader were then buried instantly by God opening up the ground and then closing it back up again. This is exactly what will happen to the invading army. The second thing that will happen is that there will be nine armies on a very small piece of real estate called Israel. When they start combat with each other, there will be nine armies and nine languages involved. The Bible says that people will turn their swords against each other and they will destroy each other. But God will make sure that no one is confused about who is causing this. He sends stones from heaven that weigh 100 pounds. He is going to stone those who are invading Israel because he is the defender of Israel and because stoning was something done in the Old Testament to those who were violating the law of God. God is still in charge and has all power in heaven and on earth. No nation or group of nations are going to prevail when it comes against Israel. The book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 5. It says the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it. They're going to see it in Israel. Hezbollah is working with Iran, they're trying to develop missile bases in Lebanon and Syria, and they're moving closer to the Golan Heights. What they want to do at the end of the day is surround Israel on all sides. Remember that Israel is tiny compared to other countries. Even though it's small, it punches far above its weight. But the goal of Iran is to surround Israel on all sides and form a land corridor from Tehran to the Mediterranean Sea. The people they are focused on Israel and their goal of making Israel disappear. We know this won't happen from reading the book, but these are their current plans. The Bible makes it clear that Israel is the only nation created by God. No other nation can claim that. In Genesis 1 verse 1, it says in the beginning God created heaven and earth. This means that God had the right to do whatever he wanted with the earth after people failed in the Garden of Eden. After the people of Noah's time failed, God found Abraham and started a special nation of people. He did this because he wanted to teach his children the ways of the Lord. This is a very powerful phrase for every nation that wishes to survive. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob formed a family from which came the Old Testament prophets, kings, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Twelve Disciples, and John the Revelator. All of these things happen because Christians should support Israel. God makes a covenant with everyone in the world in Genesis 12 verse 3 which says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. The Bible talks about the end of time. This began when Israel was reborn in 1948. The prophetic clock does not start running until the Jewish people are back in their land. They had been out of the land for almost 2,000 years. But in 1948, they came back to Israel from 66 different nations and speaking 66 different languages. They created Israel from the loss of the Holocaust in just one day. The Bible says that when we see certain signs, it means that Jesus is coming back soon. Our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to help us bring you more Word of God to the world. Here is another sermon you will love. Thank you, and God bless you.